and a Norwich team still bubbling after that two-leg win over at Bayern Munich. Well, late fitness tests for David Seaman and Nigel Winterburn for the Gunners. Winterburn failed his, but Seaman took his place in goal. For Norwich, Mark Bowen returned to the starting lineup, and we pick up the action now in the first half. Your commentator is Jerry Harrison. 1-1, one, one, of course, in the first Coca-Cola Cup tie at Highbury, then Nort Nort a few days afterwards in the Premiership match. So it's likely to be just as tight, but that was a mistake, and that's that in Paul Merson. And uh, here comes Anders Limpart, and an opening now for Smith. Oh, it should have been buried. The goalkeeper was well beaten, and Norwich were let off the hook. Well, Arsenal did this perfectly correctly after Butterworth made a terrible error. Merson finds his man. Limpar unselfishly relays it to Smith. He's got a bit of a target. It took some time, and then hits the bar. Well done by Bowen. Linigan knocks it away. Smith, awkward ball, and Newman is on to him fast. Arsenal linking up better in midfield, but it's uh, Merson who slips, recovers, gets a return from Wright. Wright is in here now, he's going to get to this one. Good goalkeeping. Great play by Brian Gunn. And the Scottish number one saves Norwich City from the deadly Ian Wright. It's a fine through ball from Merson. What a great pass. And Wright looked to be in there, but uh, Gunn had read it superbly, just gets his hands to it. Poston for Sutton. Old as ever right behind him, Goss and Jensen. And that's a free kick given against John Jensen. Quite a hard decision. But uh, nothing much has gone for Jerry Goss or Crook at the moment. Butterworth has pushed up over the far side. This is for Sutton. Can he turn his man here? Feels for handball from the Arsenal supporters. Sutton's done well, but the referee had blown for an infringement by Sutton. In goes, uh, well, Butterworth, but quite rightly didn't get there. On, almost Gunn didn't get there. Now he's in trouble. As Wright knocks it in. Ian Wright cashing in on an error by Gunn. And Arsenal are in the lead. And not for the first time. Norwich City defenders have slipped on this wet, treacherous surface. Now Wright gets in here, but it looks as if the goalkeeper was going to get it. Wright recovers quickly. Gunn is... Retracing his steps, but it's beautifully put in. 1-0. And number 15 for Ian Wright. Should have been Brian Guns. He slips, he runs out of his control, and Wright very cleverly knocks that one into the empty net. Arsenal supporters in pretty good voice behind uh, David Seaman. Oh, and Merson almost got hold of that one. Gets a rebound here, which he can pursue. Merson good on that left foot. Oh, and there goes right again. Oh, a brilliant save by Brian Gunn. Arsenal claim it got over the line, but the referee was right there. It hadn't superbly retrieved there by Brian Gunn. As right got a very powerful header in. Looks like it was going to loop over the top of him. George Graham said uh, to the Arsenal supporters, don't worry, when we come to Carrow Road, we're going to get more chances, and that's proved perfectly correct. They're getting stuck in a bit better, uh, Norwich City now. Edie. Long ball four for Sutton. Sutton and Bowl clashing, and the referee says play on. It's a pretty physical contest between these two, but uh, the referee right on top of it. Well, they come in numbers at uh, Highbury. Adams was giving uh, Sutton a pretty hard time in the first game. Now it's bold. Fox. At last, they're beginning to get him a bit of possession. Although to say he's in the game isn't quite accurate. Doing well with Polston there. Oh, letting it through here for Crook. Good save by David Seaman. This is better stuff from Norwich City. 
That was nimbly worked on the right-hand side. Poston coming through to support uh, Fox. Sutton lets it run on. And a quick snapshot from Crook cuts the side. Just will mark up in their own penalty area. Crook, little chip forward towards Sutton. Back into space. Poston is in there. Butterworth. And there was no real pressure on David Seaman. Well, this is better play from Norwich City after a tentative start and going behind to that uh, Ian Wright goal. Smith does well. Limpar getting Ian Wright through. He's on the good left foot. Good save. Merson. Merson knocks the rebound in. He did well, but Wright did superbly. And after Gunn looked as if he'd saved the day, it was uh, very calmly put in by Paul Merson. Well, when it comes through from Limpar to right on his left foot, you think it's curtains. But Gunn does beautifully, unfortunately, straight to Merson. First time, in it goes. Well, this was quick reactions from Gunn and very quick reactions from Paul Merson. Good save. But what a good first-time shot. Selly keeping it in. Smith, lovely touch to Paul Merson. Ian Wright is free over the right-hand side. This could be the third and could wrap it up. It's all over now for Norwich City. It's 3-0 and Ian Wright again. That was a hell of a break on the left-hand side. And Norwich were cut wide open. Terrific ball down the left-hand side, great pass from Merson, and Ian Wright, as the goalkeeper takes up a position, buries it. Great finishing with his right foot. A lovely crossfield pass with his right foot from Merson, and a superb first-time finishing from Ian Wright. Out comes Gunn. Good leap by Butterworth. Fox but there's no Norwich players up here yet. He's going to have to hold it and wait for a bit of support. It's a good run. Goss is up with him. Such is through here. Might be in with a chance. Good lob. Oh, a great save. Daryl Such's first touch and producing a brilliant save from David Seaman. That looked to be on its way in. Nicely timed. Great bit of uh, acrobatics. He certainly made a difference, uh, Daryl Such, since he came on, but really it's not going to make a difference to the scoreline because we're coming up to the 90-minute mark and uh, Arsenal are comfortably in control. Sutton might get hold of this one before Seaman. And Seaman did well, despite the fact that he's got an injured right ankle. He's limping a little bit there. Did well to get a hold of that one pretty quickly. Sutton couldn't quite flick it on towards uh, Goss. They've worked very hard, Norwich City, but uh, really in most departments, Arsenal have worked harder. And they settled it in the first half, really. Merson feeds uh, right here. They're still looking for another. And here's Smith. A push. And it doesn't count. But it's all academic, really, because we're in time added on. Arsenal are well in control. It's offside there, but uh, this is why the referee disallowed this one. Perfect cross. Smith comes in, but apparently, according to the referee, to the folks, there was a push there. Well, here's the goal that uh, probably finished it off as a contest. Terrific pass from Merson. Great finish from Wright. Such still they're pushing forward lovely ball towards mark bowen wright is uh, working back there in a defensive position as the referee blows for the end of a game consummately won by arsenal the cup specialists bring the canaries down to earth with a bump very important congratulations. I get the impression that uh, you prefer playing away from home these days. Another terrific result. Yeah, it went quite well for us today. Um, you know, we just have to 
try and play as well as we can because Norwich um, they haven't been scoring many goals at home and we knew that if we could catch them on the break, maybe we could uh, win the game. Paul, do you feel more comfortable, comfortable away from home? Do you get more chances? Yeah, I do, but we have been getting a lot of chances at home and you know we've been unlucky not taking them, but we are playing better football away because you know, other teams are coming out and having a go at us and we can catch them on the counter-attack. You didn't say it there, Les, but Paul Merson described his mate Ian Wright as a genius. Would you go along with that? Yeah, he's, a, he's an incredible, great goal scorer. What's he like to play alongside? Oh, he's full of enthusiasm and he, he's great, you know, and you know he gets a half chance and he'll finish for you. Well, we can have a look at the goals he scored uh, tonight. The first one, well, it was dramatic, wasn't it? Yeah, Gunn does well here, he should, but he should have held the ball. Unfortunately, he slips just before he gets to the ball. Wright has a quick look up, sees him off his line, scrambling to get back and just decides. There's only one place for it, and there it goes. Incredible. Great finish. Absolutely incredible. And the second, George Graham described as his favourite because it involved more of the team. It, a great ball there from Alan Smith, who's probably one of the best strikers around with his back to goal. His awareness of players around him is superb. Plays a great ball to Merson, and Merson misses him. A tremendous ball. And right, he has the easier task of slipping it past Gunnery. Now, which he does excellently. He does brilliantly. Now, it was a sad Ian Wright that I saw in Rotterdam after England's defeat by Holland. Uh, but his manager reckons he can still be playing at the age of 34 when the next World Cup comes around. Do you reckon that's right? Well, Ian looks after himself, you know. He hasn't got an ounce of fat on him and um, he does take care of himself. So if he keeps going the way he's going, I'm sure he will be there. And how can you explain Arsenal in cup competitions? Ten over two ties against Liège, three here. I mean, they've really discovered their goal-scoring touch, uh, at least in the cup. I know um, George Graham's been going on about their goal scoring and um, I've given him a good answer tonight. They did. A great answer. Les, thanks a lot. There's talk of a goals crisis at Arsenal. They don't seem to have any problems when they take to the road on a Wednesday. Seven in Belgium last week. Last night there were three more against Norwich. Ian Wright's first, the pick of them. And the England striker had a hand in the second. Smith does well. Limpar getting Ian Wright through. He's on the good left foot. Good save, Merson. Merson knocks the rebound in. Smith, lovely touch to Paul Merson. Ian Wright is free over the right-hand side. This could be the third that could wrap it up. It's all over now for Norwich City. It's 3-0, and Ian Wright again. First Division Crystal Palace could have been excused. In Arsenal's third-round Coca-Cola Cup victory over Norwich last night. He scored twice in their 3-0 win to put the Gunners into the last 16 and extend their remarkable cup record. Arsenal haven't lost a cup tie since January 1992. That's a run of 25 games. Their first goal last night came in the 14th minute when Ian Wright played a brilliant chip shot on the turn. And it was Wright who set up Arsenal's second. Norwich keeper Brian Gunn blocking his shot only for Paul Merson to score off the rebound. In the second half, Merson on a 20-yard dash fed who else but Ian Wright to side foot home. It was Wright's 72nd goal in 100 appearances for the Gunners. And that puts Arsenal into the fourth round where they'll entertain Aston Villa at Highbury. Wimbledon travel to Anfield. QPR are at home to last year's beaten finalist Sheffield Wednesday. Allegedly made to a linesman during the Coca-Cola Cup tie with Norwich at Highbury last month. But he has a ref on his side for a change. Alan Guns told the FA that Wright apologised three times during the game. The FA are still deciding whether to take any action. Snow's already put... What sort of cross can he put in? Is it gone? Arsenal beat Sheffield Wednesday in the Coca-Cola Cup final, but while Morrow's teammates collect the cup, the unlucky midfielder heads to hospital with a badly broken arm, courtesy of skipper Tony Adams. Jan Vouter's elbow puts a dent in Paul Gascoigne's cheek. And he... Graham is known as a great motivator and is the most successful club manager currently in the game, having led Arsenal to League, FA Cup and League Cup titles. However, the Football Association may want an Englishman. And in any case, Graham is tied to a highly lucrative contract at Highbury. Glenn Hoddle came to Chelsea after leading Swindon. Upton Park. Adams missed the Gunners' last two games at, and England's game with San Marino because of flu. Well, George, you were saying that you wanted Real Madrid. In fact, you've got Torino. Well, uh, I think the eight teams that are actually uh, now in the quarterfinals, they're all strong. I mean, two Italians, uh, Real Madrid, Benfica, Paris Saint-Germain, the Ajax. They're all strong sides and arguably, uh, well, I think this is the strongest European competition this year. Now, Torino, of course, have just put out Aberdeen. Will you be going back to Scotland for a bit of information? 
Uh, my problem would be uh, phone up the manager uh, there, but uh, we've got a few tapes on him already. <coughs> I watch uh, a lot of Italian football on television, and funnily enough, I've seen Torino in the last couple of weeks, where they lost 3-2 at uh, home against Sampdoria. What conclusions did you draw from that? Yeah, good side. Uh, very, very strong defensively, uh, but so are we. Uh, I think it's going to be very interesting ties. I think there's some tremendous uh, games, not only with sales, but some, some tremendous, tremendous ties in the rest of the, uh, the competition as well. So the Italians arguably are the, not even arguably, are the, the strongest club size in the world. I think everybody recognises that they're strong, and yet even at the, the national side doesn't do as well as what everybody thinks they should do. Mm. But still at club level, very, very strong. I think the best in the world. Where did that 7-0 win in Liège stand among Arsenal's best performances in your seven years as manager? Well, to go away any play, anywhere, uh, especially in Europe, and uh, defeat anybody 7 nothing is a tremendous performance. Uh, a lot of people saying they were a bad side. You've still got to beat bad sides, and you've still got to score seven goals against bad sides. And I think the quality of the performance was very encouraging. Uh, I think the, the goal in the first couple of minutes uh, gave the boys a lot of confidence, uh, took a lot of pressure off them, and they enjoyed playing. Uh, I wish I could transfer that to the, the league uh, set-up. I was going to say to you, Ken, you got it trying to, starting today against Aston Villa, can they be caught Manchester United? Yeah, I would think even Alec. He's, he's too shrewd to start, start talking about championships uh, so early in the season. You know, they, they just need to lose a few on the trot and everybody else, uh, the hunting pack just needs to win a few. That's the beauty of this uh, three points for a win. Mm. Uh, you can catch up points very quickly. But they are very strong. I think it was a bit of a surprise uh, getting knocked out of Europe. Uh, I think they lost that one at uh, Old Trafford. Uh, it was still a good result uh, in Turkey. Mm. But uh, I think Old Trafford was probably uh, their failure. But they're still a very, very strong side. Uh, they're the team to beat this year, I think.